If you're watching this show on YouTube, you missed the first part of the show. You missed the misery. <laughs> that is <laughs> miseries of the one true niz. Misery. <laughs> you missed it. If you want to see it, you're going to have to go to the Liberty Principal Facebook page and check that out. This is His Daily Wednesday. I am Paul Gordon, and I am here with the one true niz. I'll say hi to everybody that's uh, watching right now. Yeah, I got to say hi to Larry, Larry Cousins, and and Becca. Uh, those are the two that, that I've seen posted so far or, or showed up so far. So the title of this show is If Hating Guns Means Putting Kids at Risk, Let's Do It. So that that's going to be our opening story, and we have a story that's somewhat related to that that, that we're going to share that news dug up. On our Skynetter segment, we're going to be talking about getting, getting, uh, what the heck? Getting road Rope for harvest. robo. Oh, I, I don't know what I was trying to write there. Getting road for robo Amer army America. I don't, I'll oh, get it. I don't know what I'm saying, but anyway, army America, <laughs> robo army America. We're going to be talking about army, robo army America and on Liberty tech. We're going to end with something hopeful, blockchain banking, although it's kind of scary because I know it involves AI, which is probably going to trigger you. And that's uh, blockchain banking, thanks to Amanda. Am oh, wait, you know an Amanda, don't you? I, know. I do, yeah. How do you yeah, like that? Well, this Amanda is an AI that's going to make everything right with the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> I I. I I told the one true Niz uh, before the show, I believe that everyone should make the effort at least three times a day in a public setting that, that you know is going to be documented in a place where the robots can later access it. Right. Every time say, you walk past a public security camera, you need to look up and say, hey, it's me. I welcome the robot overlords. Everyone is going to look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> but when the, when the metal ones come for you... <laughs> Uh, yep. They'll be regretting that yep. they weren't the lunatic out there saying like, uh, they welcome the robot overlords to every camera. Like that, that guy, you got to fight them in the robo world. You, <laughs> right, right. you get to You're help round up the humans. <laughs> so, <laughs> good, good times, good times. Let's get to our 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 our, our top story here, and uh, this is it's it's an old story. It it happened back in November, but at the time, not a lot of people were talking about it. it I mean, it got a little bit of play, but it didn't get much. I think in light of what's going on right now with the histrionics over guns following the Florida shooting, that I think it's timely to bring it up because I personally think that this has a narrative to it that kind of goes against all of their claims of being for the kids. But before we do that, let me play the bump for this segment. Got to do that. Dude, I almost forgot to do that. You're about ready to enter Newsfire. What are the big stories, the big headlines everyone else is focused on? And what, if anything, can we, who pursue the power to act without threat or action of physical force, learn from these stories? This is Newsfire, where we set your news on fire. Yes. Oh, by the way, if you want to call in, the number is... Uh scrolling across the screen there it's 1903-218-2081 if you want to call in and complain great i'll if i'll let you talk for two seconds and then i'll hang up on you no i'm just kidding uh, at least five seconds i give you a, i give you <laughs> hang up on you i'll pull mark levin you big dummy get up the phone you big dummy yes so this is uh, this is a uh, it's legislation that passed in California. I and you, you read the article. Do you want you want to go over this article? How do, how do you want to do this? Uh, go for it, man. Because I brought All the right. other article. So All right. Okay. Okay. So so California is well. It's basically as I put it. It's it's an innovator. It's an innovator in a really really horrible way. It's it finds clever ways to keep infringing on an individual's ability to legally, and when I say legally, I mean without threat of coercion, acquire, possess, and carry effective tools of self-defense, which are simply guns. So 
They passed legislation back in November of uh, 2017 that outlawed. It's AB 424. It's introduced by Assemblyman Kevin McCarty, a Democrat from Sacramento. By the way, when I say Assemblyman Kevin McCarty, I just want to make it clear that there should be like a hissing sound when I say that name. You're like, ah! something like, or like villainous music comes up when you hear 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 that. So apparently, some some California districts they decided to allow for qualified teachers to end staff to conceal carry uh, on campus as a way to defend themselves and their students from potential shooters. Well. Assemblyman Kevin Mark Cartney to the rescue. He's not he's not rescuing kids, by the way. He's rescuing mass shooters. So they have signed into law that it's strictly prohibited for anyone to have a gun in possession. And if you are caught, like even if you use your gun in self-defense, that's no excuse. You're still going to be penalized in the full uh extent of the law, such as the law, quote unquote, allows. So what they've essentially done here is they've written legislation that <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, and, and Jerry Brown signed it. Jerry, I hate guns more than I love <laughs> children. Brown signed it. And it, it, it basically, it assures that psychopaths looking for target rich safe killing zones uh where they know that uh they have a you know a target rich area uh and they and they know that they can kill without consequence for at least a good 10 minutes if not longer, not longer. they know exactly, exactly where to go go ahead i didn't say anything oh i heard myself like an echo of myself there for a second and i thought it was you our voices are kind of similar so, so they know exactly where to go. That's just the schools, man. They've just they just made the target around California schools even bigger. And this is this is where I get the title for this show because usually the titles are the top, you know, the first story we're going to cover. They basically they hate guns more than they love children. They hate guns so much that they're willing to put children at risk i'm missing anything here you are you can can you correct me in my error of my ways and show me how these guys no, are, these guys it's, all it's, right. the, the whole thing is absolutely incredible i mean uh the 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 gun free school zone that they had in florida didn't protect anyone i'll just tell you that right now that they didn't protect any you can go right down the list here on this i mean you had the the, the other florida shooting in orlando uh, what was that? Uh, when, when was that? A couple of years ago, right? Yeah, at the nightclub, gun free, gun free zone. Didn't save anyone. Didn't help anyone. Well, it helped the shooter. Well, <laughs> right, right, right. It ensured and, 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 that uh, that he could continue unimpeded. Yeah, and I and I do want to. I I kind of covered this a little bit last week. We actually covered the Florida shooting and. Which basically I manage. I don't use expletives during shows. Uh, I, I try not to, but I, I think I've used four or five last week. Uh, but one thing I do want to make it you clear: I, I don't. What's what's that? You were on a I, roll last week. I, I was on a roll. I was on yeah, a roll in very rare form. I was I was hot under the collar, uh, but. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying, you know, just because you have a gun, it doesn't make you invincible. It doesn't mean that you actually would have stopped someone. But I like my chances better if somebody has a gun, if I have a gun. I mean, ideally, if I'm facing a rifle, I would like to have a rifle in response. But if I had a choice between my finger or a handgun, I'm going to pick a handgun. So what they've done is they've criminalized anyone using their gun in self in essence they i mean the, the legislation doesn't explicitly say this but i've i've talked i think i talked about this just yesterday at, or no monday i talked about this on monday or and by the way i encourage you go to uh uh 
uh, isdaily.live. You see different show notes, and one of them is the gun, gun, the secret history of uh, the the secret racist history of gun control. But but in that, I talk about how how legislation works. They're not writing legislation to go out and confiscate your guns because they know they can't do that. They are writing legislation that does two things. One, it it pro, criminalizes uh, the use of that it, weapon, whether it's for even if it's for defense. Right. So you can say, well, you know, they could pass all the laws they want. I'm still going to keep my guns. Well, great. I, I agree with you. But the minute that you have to use that gun. In self-defense, you are going to be prosecuted, I can assure you. And the same cops that won't go to your home to confiscate your guns, oh, no, 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 they'll arrest you for this, and, and then they will confiscate your guns. You, as an individual, they'll confiscate your guns, and they'll be sure to do everything they can to gather the evidence so that you can be right. prosecuted for violating the gun laws. So this is how this works. So, yeah, right. they could pass and then, this And then law. on top of that, on top of that, you get good news, everyone. You're now a felon. Good news, right. And You're barred from ever owning guns again. I mean, yeah. gr congratulations, right. congratulations, you saved 20 people from getting murdered by a freaking lunatic, but at the same time now, you're also a felon, and right. uh, we'll see you in five to ten minimum, and when you get out, uh, you'll never own a gun again. You know, Legally. I just I just realized, that, you know, there should America should change its uh, name, uh, because they have so many laws on the books that, uh, was, I can't remember the name of the guy that wrote, you know what, I'm going to check it out, what is it? The, the name of the book, it's uh, Three Felonies a Day, something like that. But there's so much, there's so many laws out there that you don't even know that you've broken. That, that <laughs> you, you're not, tr even, you're, 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 you know, you're a good citizen and you really want to make sure that you're a, an upright kind of guy. And uh, uh, the, the guy's name is Harvey Silver, Silver, Silver Glate. Silverglade? Three felonies a day, how the feds target the innocent is the name of the book. Uh, but, you you know, you you love America. You love following the laws and the rules of laws and all that stuff and law and orders. You're probably still committing at least one felony a day. So I think that they should, America should be retitled and it should now be known as Felontopia. I'm... <laughs> I'm putting it out there. In 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 st instead of the stars and bars, just the bars. Just the bars. <laughs> just the bars. I, I, somebody meme that, please. <laughs> There's got to yes. be some memes out of that. I expect somebody. I see John Smith is on. Hi, John Smith. And hello, Richard Gurry and uh, Brian Barker as well. And I I, I, I typed hi to Ken Ken Odinger. How you doing? Uh, but I I know that John, you're capable. You can meme this. Do it. Right. Do me proud, just buddy. Just the bars. <laughs> right. Just the bars. But, that's, but isn't that no the more point, stars, though? Just bars. At, isn't that the point, though? Because at, at, at any point, if they decide this guy's got to go, uh, the laws are so voluminous that, uh, you know, like like you said, uh, with that, with that quote, you. three felonies a day, um, they want to get you. They're going to come get you. Yeah. That's, that's the point. And that's the point of this legislation, which is... Well, yeah. I mean, you could say, well, sure, they could pass this law, but I, I'm, I'm still going to carry. Oh, my gosh. Look, I'm looking at the, uh, the, the, the cover picture here. Let me see if I got – do I got the – okay, here we go. I got the website thing. Okay. Let's, let's see if I can get you – let me see if I can click on this and you can see that. There it is. You see the image there, folks? That's the cover for <laughs> three felonies. That's what I'm talking about. Except you just lob off the stars part. Just, just make it there. The bars. Just give me the bars. <laughs> Harvey, Harvey, man, I'm telling you, Harvey. I'm telling you, it's Harvey Silverglate. That's an awkward name, isn't it? It's it it's, is. Yeah. It's like Silvergate. That makes sense. Yeah. Silverglate. It doesn't, it doesn't is a exactly typo. roll off the tongue. No, it looks like a typo. Sorry, Harvey. No offense, but yeah, but yeah. your name <laughs> that offends me. I, that offends me. So, so what they've done here is yeah, they 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 
you can you can carry. They're not going to be able to find everybody who's carrying. They're not going to be able to send people out to frisk people and do whatever the crap they're going to do. Or they they could pay millions, go gazillions dollars to set up the uh, the uh, the metal detector systems that some schools have. Uh, but the bottom line is, some people, if they really want to carry in the school, they can. They can't stop them. Uh, but the minute that you have to use it, oh, well, that's when you're, that's when you're in trouble. So now, if you do happen to have a gun on you, and you happen like maybe you're you're a parent, you're coming to the school, maybe you're not even thinking about it, you know, you because I mean I carry, and you know the philosophy of carry is ABC always be carrying that way if you ever. Most of the time, I don't really feel like I need to carry. I don't feel that much of a threat. But you do it anyway because then you never forget. It's better to have a gun when you don't need it than to not have a gun when you need it. So you could easily walk into a place like a, 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 no, a gun-free zone and forget. Forget. Uh, yes. Uh, by the way, John Smith said, yes, yeah, Harvey, you should change your name to please the Paul. That is absolutely correct, John Smith. That is spot on analysis. Hey, you should call in. You'd be a fine addition to the show. You, that's <laughs> that's witty and insightful and truthful analysis. Uh, but you know, you you're <laughs> you're 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 gonna forget. So you walk into a a gun free zone. Something goes down. And I mean, you got two decisions to make. The first one is, do I want to risk my life? And then after you think about, do I want to risk my life? Now they've put another impediment that would prevent someone who may be able to stop the shooter from stopping the shooter. And that is, do I want to be arrested and prosecuted and lose the quote unquote right to bear right. arms? <clears throat> it's, and, this seems very Australia like. It seems like they're they're they are modeling this. Oh, Australia is after the dream. The, well, and and right, right, and, I, and this is this is something that 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 now California has in common with Australia, is that uh, it is illegal in Australia to use a gun for self defense. Okay, <laughs> so there you go. It's illegal to. I did not know that. Right. That's new information for me. So mm -hmm. so there you have it again. You no. Know, that's what people don't understand about these gun laws is they they don't have to be enforceable. They they it's much easier for them to selectively enforce it once you actually have to use the gun. But, you know, I just read a story recently and uh, I can't remember the details because I kind of glanced over it. But somebody found an intruder in their home. Now, it might turn out this person's story is not right, but still. I don't know. So uh, uh, he allegedly found an intruder. He beat him on the head with a shovel, killing the intruder. And then he he tried to get rid of the body. And the reason he tried to get rid of the body is because he was what what he claimed was he was thinking that hey, even though I could, had a legitimate reason to swing on this guy because he was trying to break into my home, I may have some legal issues, so it's better to just get rid of the body. Yeah, that's what you're going to do in California. <laughs> if if you end up having to use your gun, you take someone out, and you know you, you, you were totally defending yourself. It doesn't matter. Even if it was totally revealed that you were defending yourself, you still might get prosecuted, so you might... Yeah, you might decide to just go ahead and get rid of the body. Just saying. This is just... this this is how absurd, Paul, to to say. I'm gonna I posted this here in the uh, in the chat on uh, on Facebook. So if you're on YouTube uh, right now, and you, you and you're it. watching live, you missed it. Uh, but but don't don't fret because I will repeat it. Uh, I just posted in the chat here on Facebook, uh, Australia. Owning any object for the purpose of self-defense, whether it is lethal or non-lethal, is a criminal offense. And that stems from that 1996 uh, uh, legislation that they passed or that uh, effectively outlawed firearms. I was trying to think of a witty repurposing of the song Down Under, and I couldn't come up with it. I come from the land down under. Mm. Where where women glow and soy boys plunder? I don't I don't I couldn't That's, think of it. I don't soy think boys soy plunder. boys plunder. I don't think they prance. Where soy prance. boys blunder? 
Where women sashay. blow and soy boys blunder. What'd you say? I said they sashay. They prance. I don't know if they necessarily <laughs> they, blunder. They blunder. Okay, well, by my work. standards, they're, when it comes to life, they're blundering. Uh, Richard <laughs> Gurry said, ABC always be carrying 75 gallons of hydrochloric <laughs> acid. Just, Just in, in case. case. Either that or if you can put a pig farm in your pocket, because pigs, they'll eat anything. They'll eat that. They'll eat the bones. That's what, <laughs> that's what the... So, the, so keep a pig farm in one side, in one pocket, and uh, keep your gun in the other pocket. That way, you know, when when the need arises, you know, you just throw them into the pig farm and no must, no fuss. That's the end of that. <laughs> so what's your related story you have here? Uh, actually, you know, with with uh, when we're seeing this right now, um, this, this uh, huge... Uh, uh, I guess I could say activist outreach, I guess you could say. I, I'm not really sure what to call it. The The agenda is in full swing, the gun grabber agenda. Oh, they think uh, they've got this something in, here now. You're seeing this in the media. Right, right. They've got something here now. They're parading all these kids around. Uh, you know, you're having uh, mass protests staged all over the country. Uh, these goofy kids are walking out all, uh, 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 all over school, uh, from schools all over the country. Uh, it's on the news, it's on the TV, it's on the radio, it's on the web. I mean, everybody's talking about, uh, you know, oh, we got to get rid of those evil AR-15s. And uh, you, know, you have some voices, uh, you have some voices that are speaking up. They're saying, hey, you know what? Let's let's not do this. Let's instead empower individuals to take the def their their own self defense and the defense of our children into their own hands and take it seriously. And uh, you, you hear all kinds of arguments against this, but uh, one of the practical applications in favor of this actually comes, and I know some people on, uh, especially where we're broadcasting this right now, you may recoil in horror, but... Uh, you may trigger just, me with this article, but go I ahead. I may trigger some people here with this article, but I'm going to tell you uh, that this this is, uh, there is some substance here to this. I'm going to show uh, this comes here. from. here. Israel National News, and this is an article that was uh, uh, published on 2-15-2008 uh, um, in, uh, wow. like I said, in the uh, Israel National News. Um, and uh, basically what this, this article, it, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this guy's name because I don't speak Hebrew or whatever the heck that name is, but if there's, a, there's not a whole lot of vowels in that name. It's an awful lot of consonants uh, all jammed together. That's uh, Zvilev. Z okay. Z -Lev. Z -Lev. What he said. Uh, so anyway, uh, basically this article points out how before, um, uh, uh, before I think it was 1974, uh, Israel had some really really tight gun laws, and um, they they ended up uh, they had a, a school shooting, an attack at a school. Uh, several students, uh, several students were killed. Several students injured. And basically, Israel's response to this was, "Hey, let's uh, let's loosen the gun laws, let's loosen the gun legislation, let's get more of our citizens armed, and let's make sure that there are armed personnel in our schools to protect our children." And guess what? That little sign that they hung up on the door that says, uh, you know, our, our, our staff, our faculty is there. They are armed and trained and authorized to use deadly force to protect our children. Guess how many school shootings they've had since then? I don't know, but, but a big uh, fat goose egg. Zero. But, Not, but I, I do want to, I want to, want to, there's a part of this article that kind of triggers me. In Israel, gun ownership is a privilege rather than a right. There is no such thing as a right to bear arms in Israel. Uh, they, they, uh, Israel has to show, if you want a gun, you have to show genuine cause to carry a firearm such as self-defense or hunting. I would I fundamentally disagree with all that. Let's just, just throw that out there. And also, if I'm, if I understand right in Israel, I could be wrong, but I believe that you have to be a member of the military to own a firearm. Of course, in Israel, it's also mandatory. Right, they, right, they have man. They, it's mandatory. If you are an Israeli citizen, 
you at one point you had to serve with the IDF. Yeah, most likely. But th there are some. Not everybody has to serve, but I think you got to go jump through some serious hoops to be exempted from serving. I don't know the exact laws, but but anyway, that part that part sucks, and the mandatory serving in the military that part also sucks. But the point being that uh, Israel recognized, hey, hey, we actually need now. I I would say, you know, when with <laughs> when it comes to guns in schools, teachers carrying guns in schools, I'm like. That's not really an argument that I can even have because we're talking about public schools and I'm fundamentally opposed to public schools. And I don't know how I feel about arming government employees who are in the, in, you know, taking care of, of the, of the children's who I'm going to say don't have a great record. So, well, and and, like, and on top of that, also you also have to consider that you know the, the the American public education system is by and large a leftist indoctrination camp. I mean, from from K all the way to college is pretty much a leftist indoctrination camp that you're sending your kids to these uh, uh, to these progressive uh, daycare gulags. Uh, you, you know, from K to like I said, from K to college. And, uh, you know, I mean, do, do you really want to have that left, that uh, left limp wristed leftist soy boy, uh, you know, that doesn't even, uh, right, right, that doesn't, he, they don't want firearms. They, these are the people that want to ban firearms. And we're going to say, oh, here, 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 here you go. Take a gun. Uh, that's not where I'm <laughs> really what I'm saying. I mean, my, the direction that I would go, that I would go with this is that we have, uh, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands uh, of retired military veterans that are driving school buses, that are uh, checking your receipt as you walk out of the door. Well, let's give these guys their rifles back. Give them back their rifles and say, hey, you, you, you spent how many years, uh, you know, serving in the military? Now go protect our children. Make sure our children don't get smoked by some freaking wacko. So we got Larry. Larry saying Ben Stein made some great points today, saying that the general public need not own AR-15s. And he quoted Ben Stein here, saying hey, Ben Stein can get bent, by the way. Like seriously, right? Like ben, ben Stein bent. can suck it, and so can Larry, uh, because yeah, Larry. who the hell are you to think that you're so freaking pompous that you can come and tell me what it is that I want or need? Screw you, man. Yeah, that's. I not, mean, I don't. That, you, Need to That's not how need. quote rights work. I don't have to right. prove that I, I need this or I don't need this. So his, his quote is: "An AR-15 is a weapon that is extremely seductive. It looks like a weapon of war. Makes a person who's a big nerd be able to go into a gun shop, buy it, come out feeling like he's Rambo." I think that's true sometimes. I don't think that's true most of the time. AR-15 is actually it's an extremely practical gun. The design. It's a uh, it's a good working design. It's uh, you know it's uh, it's a gun that you can switch around and uh, do in all types of configurations. It's highly modular. It's a very practical design. The fact that it looks military is because the military once used a version of it. it uh, they used a an actual assault rifle version of it. The AR-15 is simply a semi-automatic rifle that fires. I mean, for the most part, an AR-15 fires the uh, the two two three five five six. You can actually even reconfigure that to fire different calibers. Oh, and Larry says, moreover, Stein continued that the AR-15 is not practical for private ownership because it is not an ideal target shooting weapon, not an ideal hunting weapon, not an ideal home defense weapon. Uh, there is no such thing as an ideal target shooting weapon, an ideal hunting weapon, or an ideal home defense weapon. It has its purposes, it has its limitations, it has its advantages. I wouldn't use an AR-15 in the home unless you had some serious ear protection on because you're going to do some bad things. Uh, but yeah, there's plenty of folks that use AR-15s to hunt, and they're highly effective. Right, but and that, that, that round, the two two three, that's a varmint round. That That's, that's, a, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, Highly these people are round. making it out like it's a freaking bazooka, and we're not talking about we're not talking about a, so a uh, an extremely caliber, high powered rifle here. Twenty two caliber. It's it's powers and right. it's speed. But listen, Larry, uh, Larry wants to say that it's not practical for home ownership, a private ownership. I'm who cares? 
I, I, I don't care if it's practical for private ownership. That's not Ben Stein's and, call and, to determine what is practical and what's not practical and to make a, a prescription list based off of that. <laughs> right, Stein, and who are you and, to and tell these, me? Right, and who are these, you to tell me what I, what I can and can't deem as practical? Who are you to make that decision for me? What gave you what gave you the the authority to make that decision for me or for my family or for whatever my needs may be? And and even these quotes show that uh, Ben Stein really doesn't know. I, I, I Larry likes to troll me, and I'm have a feeling that's what Larry's doing here. Larry's pretty much a gun rights guy, as far as I know. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and he knows a lot about guns, uh, so he would he would know. Larry, you you have to know that those uh, that those quotes there are not uh, not indicative of somebody who really has any significant understanding of the AR platform. It is a very practical gun, but even if it wasn't, I don't care. Okay, I want I want to have a gun that uh, is it a. Oh, what's the name of it? Uh, North, is it North American Defense? I forget. Uh, they make these little Derringers, and and they're really cool. You can do like twenty-two long rifle, and some of them are like five-shot little revolvers, and they're not very practical. <laughs> I, I I mean, they're not very accurate to any distance, but I want one, and I want one because it's beautiful, it's cool looking, it's neat. It's nothing practical about it, but I want it. And I don't want it a prescription list based off of that. And Richard Gurry said an egg slicer is not practical. Wait, <laughs> I, I, I think egg slicers are practical, Richard. I'm, I don't have one. And now that you say that, I'm like, dude, I don't have an egg slicer. I got to get an egg slicer. I got to get an egg <laughs> slicer. Hey, John Smith says McNukes everywhere. You know what, John? I belong to the Bear Nukes Coalition, or the, the, the Bear the Nukes caucus. caucus. Bear Nukes Caucus, Yeah, Correct. you do too, right? That's right, yes. Uh, I, that's designed, I, designed designed the, I designed the emblem. Okay, well, the, you definitely <laughs> belong. So, yeah, I belong to the Bear Nukes Caucus. So that's right, that's, right. That's the person you're talking right. Mini to. Mini Nukes for everyone. Mini Nukes for everyone. Right. You know, I was listening to a podcast today. It was uh, Thaddeus Russell with... Uh, was on with with the young Nick Hazelton. Nick is awesome. I have to have Nick on one of our shows soon. Uh, but Thaddeus Russell was making a point about about nuclear weapons and about how the United States they have m the power. I don't know if he, this is what he said. I don't know whether this is accurate or not. If it's not, it's probably close to accurate that they have enough. Uh, power within one of their nuclear ballist ballistic missile subs to basically annihilate all of China within five minutes with the simple order. Now his, I don't know how accurate that is, but it's probably not far off. And and he made a point that this is an incredibly expensive system that needs a lot of resources, a lot of money, and it's it's not something that any entity could produce you would have to be a huge like the largest most powerful coercive enterprise ever that'd be the united states of america uh to to build something like that so the smaller the course of enterprises on the whole the better because they can't build these 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 very expensive much more lethal than an ar-15 platforms that have killed uh, you know, government guns and bombs have killed far, far more people than the the than what individuals have done with their little AR-15s. I think 300. By the way, all of this, all of this outrage and uproar about the bump stocks, about the AR-15s, we're talking about a tool. This is it. A rifle is simply a tool. And the tool is what you make of it. Is it an offensive tool? Is it a defensive tool? For me, I don't have much much use for an offensive tool at present. If I was going offensive, it would be in response to, well, I guess it would be offensive to be defensive. So it would still be a, a, a defensive tool, a tool of self-defense, in other words. Uh, but the rifle, it's simply a tool of self-defense. 
and uh, it has claimed the lives of maybe 350 something like that people a year on average i I'm, I'm not saying of course you know i got to do the obligatory but one death you know i'm not for i'm not saying even one death is okay you know that all do my virtue signaling there i got that out of the way but we're talking about 350 deaths in a population of 320 million. And for that, you want to whip people up to a frenzy and, and let them imagine that some sort of hysterical, like, like AR-15s are running down the streets and, and raping children and killing old ladies. That's the hysteria <laughs> that, you're, I, that you're building up. And it's I actually just not have. true. I actually What's have that? the breakdown here from 2016. If you if you want to go over, it's up to you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, U.S. population in uh, in in 2016, uh, 324 million 59,091. That's as of June 22nd, 2016. Uh, 30,000 gun-related deaths by firearms for that year. Uh, that means that point uh, zero zero nine two five of the population died from a gun-related uh, incident. Uh, but if you break that number down, which is something that the, the left and the media who like to they highlight these that. higher numbers, they, they never, the ever 30, do that. So if you put these 30,000 firearm-related deaths into perspective, well, I guess first got to break down that 30,000 number and then make that comparison to other causes of death in, in America statistically. So 65% of those 30,000 are deaths by suicide. Clearly, that is not going to be prevented by guns, uh, by gun legislation. Not going to happen. Uh, so those deaths are going to happen, whether it's by firearm, by noose, well, I, by taking the bridge. I think you can argue. I think you could argue that maybe less people would have chosen to kill themselves if they didn't have a gun. But you don't nah, know, and, and, the, a, and a, the difference probably isn't going to be significant. Right. That's a that's a tough argument to make. Fifteen percent of that thirty thousand uh, are by law enforcement, so that leaves seventeen percent that are through uh, civilian criminal activity. Uh, Three percent are accidental discharge deaths. So if you if you want to talk about technically death by gun violence is definitely not uh, accurately reflected in that thirty thousand number that uh, that the left and the media likes to parade in front of the average Joe. But when you start to dig a little bit into these the, the, the numbers a little bit more, that thirty thousand drops down to fifty one hundred. And if you look at those numbers and how they're spread out across the nation, four hundred and eighty homicides were in Chicago. That's nine point four percent. 344 homicides, gun homicides were in Baltimore. That's 6.7%. 333 in Detroit. That's 6.5. 119 uh, or 2.3% were in Washington, D.C. So 25% of all the gun crime happens in four cities. And how much of that is related to the drug war? Because you created a violent black market uh, by ruthlessly going after people who are exchanging something that isn't isn't directly harming right. others. It may hurt themselves, but it's not directly right. harming others. So if you remove that 25% that happens in 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 the, those four cities, that leaves 3825 3, for the rest of the entire nation. Uh, or about 75 deaths per state per year, but you also have to keep in mind that that's an average. So some states are going to have higher rates than others. Uh, for example, California had 1,169, while Alabama had just one. So those numbers are not equally distributed uh, across the nation. So it's not accurate in, in saying 75 deaths per state. Uh, so now you have to take that, and I want you to keep that 5,100, 5,100 uh, per there? year oh, that are firearm-related. Okay? So – we have 40,000 plus that die every year from drug overdoses, and that includes dangerous prescription drugs. Uh, 36,000 people die every year from the flu. 34,000 people die every year in traffic fatalities. And here is where the numbers get absolutely insane. 200,000 plus people die each year from preventable medical errors. You are literally safer walking in the worst parts of Baltimore or Chicago than you are when you walk into a hospital. Good luck. Good times. Good times. Right, so that is absolutely crazy. So know the numbers so, because the numbers they're parading around are so, absolutely. So, I mean, the, the the bottom line is that they're they're using their their histrionics to whip up fear to try to egg people on 
Yes, I got I, an egg reference in there in honor of Richard Gurry's egg slice first slicer at, comment. Look at that number. Look at that number that we're hearing right now. I just I just watched an interview from that kid, uh, uh, Hog or Hogue or whatever the heck his name is, and he's talking about how how absolutely atrocious and ridiculous it is that we've had eighteen school shootings since the turn of the year. Eighteen school shootings they, since the opening, and they know that's a lot. I mean, and it's a total lot. Technically, there were 18 school shootings, but when you say yeah, school there shootings... There weren't, but there weren't, but there weren't. No, no, Two the, incidents were suicides. One it, was on... It was Kenny, still... It was, it was, see, himself see, in the parking okay. lot of a former school. Not even a school. Not even an actual school. It was shut down, shuttered, boarded up. These are, these are the numbers that they're putting out in front of people and saying, this was a school shooting. It was a school that was closed 25 years ago. Right. The, the, the bottom line. And, and, and on top of that, because of this, you know, they're, they're, they're cre think about what they're doing to children. They're creating they're they're filling these kids with terror. This is this is an act of terrorism. What these people are doing right now. Actually, they are they are literally terrorizing children with lies. They're they're making children believe that they live in a world of pandemic violence and their only hope is that the government be all powerful, all seeing and all knowing. So this is why for me, I have no patience with gun grabbers. I don't even have patience with anyone who I think is even remotely apologetic on the side of gun grabbers. I, well, I won't say any patience, but very little. Uh, patience, because I view these folks as as nothing more than 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 Hitler cheerleaders. It's pretty much the way that I view them. They're the ones that and yes, Larry, Paul and Jeff, that that would be the narrative. Paul and Jeff, we hate the children. So it's not us. We don't hate the children. We don't want to fill children with fear. We don't want my my daughter gets gets uh, lectures at school about and I've, I've said this multiple times i i want my daughter to do unschooling i practice peaceful parenting so i don't coercively force her to come home to do uh uh unschooling and she chooses to go to government schools unfortunately so she goes to these government schools where they're they're actually giving them they i won't say she she didn't say there were drills but they're they're talking they're giving them training of some sort even though it's just in the form of like lecture training but they're giving them training on how to deal with a mass shooting so these kids are going to bed at night fearful wondering when they go to school the next day will they be shot up and they have more chances of being struck by lightning three freaking times in one day i might not be totally accurate with that but i'm being hyperbolic here than they do being shot at school that's what they're doing, and they're doing it in the name of whipping people up so that they will turn to Daddy Gov and beg Daddy Gov, beg Daddy Gov, please, please take away our means of self-defense. Please make us even more reliant on your protection, even though we have plenty of examples of your protection fundamentally fails as it did in florida you know as it did in florida because well, this it's not just right and it's not just florida it's not just florida paul i mean we have the, no, this recent not just school florida. shooting we've got we've got the orlando shooting that was a gun free the aurora shooting that was a i mean you go down the list of where these mass shootings occur and and it's every single time it's a it's a uh a, a legislated gun free zone the, the, the appeal for a mass shooter is that this these are easy, soft targets, fish-in-a-barrel situation. They know they're not going to encounter resistance, or if they do encounter resistance, the resistance is going to be very, very light. There is very little risk. The real question that we need to start, to start asking ourselves is why, what is motivating these – uh, these young people to do these types of things. Where what is the motivation here behind this? And it certainly is not the ease of access to firearms. Because I'm going to tell you right now, firearms were a whole hell of a lot easier to get your hands on 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 years ago, and we didn't have these issues. Now all of a sudden we have all of these uh, suicides that that are related to young people, mass shootings related to young people, and all of this is spurred in the last 30 years. So what has changed? 
And it certainly is not the ease of access to firearms, because if anything, firearms have become more difficult to obtain, not easier. Five-year-old kids used to be able to order firearms out of the Sears catalog, for God's sakes. Larry said, buy some lava soap with pumice to wash the children's blood from your hands. Pumice is the key. I just want to ask you, Larry, you know a lot about washing children's blood from your hands. Just saying. Just floating that out there. Larry, by the way, is trolling, which is is, is okay. It, it's it's a thing he does. It's, it's okay. But uh, <laughs> this is... <laughs> we ended up talking basically the whole show about this, I guess. <laughs> and I didn't think we would. I had a whole show <laughs> plan, but that's fine. That's it's is what happens. But this is now th this is to me the right response to all of this as I've been thinking about it more and more is uh I'm not I'm not interested in going to legislators and begging them not to pass dangerous laws. I'm not interested in trying to have a debate with the gun grabbers who want to tell me that I hate kids because I want I don't want to get these dangerous guns off the streets when I know full well that that there there's there's no freaking epidemic dude you're you're either lying or you're a fool either way my respect for you is non-existent you're not a person of trust that I wish to associate with so what I what I've been working on trying to my 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 small part if you will is is to send a message that those of us that believe, listen, we're going to ignore these crappy laws. Okay, we can ignore the crappy laws. They're not going to send out people to confiscate our guns. But then one of us, for one reason or another, whether we get pulled over for something unrelated and they find one of these guns that's on the list, or whether we have to use the gun in self-defense, uh, whatever it is, whatever the situation might be, when they go after that person, then the rest of us need to come to the aid of that person. When they show up to arrest that person, there needs to be people that stand between them and that person's house. They need to understand that they can't just pick people off one by one because that's what they're going to want to do. And they, and they don't need to, they're, they're not like, they don't need to pick us all off. They just, you know, make a showcase here and there. And they know if they keep doing that, well, they they think, and they could be right. I'm not saying whether, maybe they won't be. I don't know. But theoretically, they're counting on if they make a few show examples, it's going to create more and more fear amongst the people that have decided to ignore the laws. And less and less people will continue to ignore the laws. And uh, the next generation of people who then have an opportunity to go out and try to illegally obtain these these guns on the prescription list, they'll be less likely to do that. But if you have people going out and saying, no, we're not doing this, in, in, the, in the 30s, you had FDR who tried to implement strict price controls, and he would send out agents. And in the beginning, uh, People will listen to what the agents had to say, and they would, you know, say you need to. They would go and they would check out the inventory of your store, and they would say these are the prices. This is what they should be. And in the beginning, it was kind of they just kind of ignored it. You know, they would the agents would come in and say you need to do this, and then they just ignored it. And then somebody would come back, and they would like trying to enforce it. And there were there I, uh, there may have been a couple arrests, uh, uh, but then all of a sudden <laughs> things changed when everybody decided, you know what? We're not putting up with this crap. So when the agents started to show up, they they were beat up. <laughs> they were their bad things happened to these agents. And then the 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 FDR administration quietly dropped the program. And they dropped the program because they realized not only was it an, an unenforceable like at a large scale, but it wasn't even enforceable in a targeted way. And that's the key. If people can demonstrate to the powers that be that their legislation is not even, uh, uh, that they can't even enforce it in a selective manner, they're going to quietly, either they'll quietly, what they'll do, they'll do one of two things. They'll, they'll, 
take the, the laws off the books like they did with Prohibition, or they'll simply just not enforce the laws, but they'll leave them on the books in case somewhere down the road they're able to uh, to to turn the, the public to be more docile than it is so that they can then have another try at it. Do you have anything to add there? I think you pretty much covered it. Yeah. I think and you I, got it pretty good. I think I think we're at the end of the show there. We we ended up spending the whole time talking about this. We didn't you know what? I don't know. We can go a little bit later. I don't know if you you can. Um I'm okay. Yeah, let's let's whatever whatever let's you feel just, like, man. Just just go a little bit later and let's just I want to end this on a happy note. So I'm gonna jump, we're gonna skip uh the the Skynetter segment. And we're going to go to Liberty Tech. And I just want to cover this story because I, I, I just want to make it clear. There's a lot of stuff happening out there that 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 actually, if, if you live in my world and you go through the type of news I go through, which you can see an aggregate of that on iState.tv, there's, there's actually more good stuff, way more good stuff happening than bad stuff. And a lot of this good stuff that's happening, it's going to make it, more and more difficult for the powers that be to enforce these onerous oppressive laws are coercive associations being outmoded by technology on liberty tech we cover stories of emerging tech that suggest the days of coercive associations even large-scale centralized operations may be numbered that's the point of liberty tech and the story that we're doing here is, oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. Okay, now the story that we're doing is the blockchain bank will be powered by AI. And her name is Amanda. Did you? Did I trigger you? <laughs> I am triggered. That's my wife's name. I am triggered. And it's it's a AI, and I know how much you love AI. AI oh, yeah. is my friend. So... So this is a company called Money Token, and they're bringing an AI assistant online that should help in the development of a block ba blockchain-based financial institution, a blockchain bank, if you will. And this this is a it's an article from ambcrypto.com. That's a m b crypto.com. Let me show the the address there so you can. Uh, there you go. I think you can see it there. So, uh, from the article here, Money Token is a blockchain-based financial ecosystem that solves one of the obvious problems that has been in existing for quite a long time. Amanda, the AI built by Money Token, will tackle the problem of getting a loan backed by crypto assets. Ooh, this is very dangerous stuff. Uh, the working objective of the company is simple. They provide liquid funds for the value of the crypto assets that you currently have. At the time of your repayment of funds, the same amount of crypto assets you pledged as collateral will be given, given back even if the value of the assets have increased. The AI, Amanda, will take care of processing of loans and oversee entire operations and even warn investors of any margin calls. And this will make the short-term investors and long-term holders benefit from their investments in cryptocurrencies while leveraging cryptocurrency-backed loan. The organization has adopted more customer-centric approach by eliminating credit checks. The loan shall be credited based on the... And by the way, if you're eliminating credit checks, that means you're eliminating the need to be entangled with the coercive enterprise. Uh, so the loan shall be credited based on the collateral in the ratio of one to two. The loan amount shall not only be provided in fiat currencies, rather if the investor plans to mobilize his funds while within cryptocurrency market, the fund shall be provided on any of the stable digital currency. So 
And I'm not saying that money token as it exists and as it's working, like it's kind of working within, it's it's got that fiat currency element, which I'd like to see done away with. But but this is just a sign of, of things to come. This is why it is that that so many countries out there, so many states in America are are trying to figure out a way to rein in the power of blockchain or or really what we're talking about is it's called fintech and what fintech is going to enable individuals and free associations to do is to create a whole financial marketplace that isn't restricted by the onerous regulations of the traditional financial sector and 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 folks uh if if you want to know where the real power in the world is it's i'm going to argue it's the bankers it's they're the yeah, ones i don't think there's an, i don't think there's a real argument there i don't, I don't think, think there's there a real argument either. against that <laughs> i'm sure somebody out there will say no no you didn't know about this maybe you're right but as far as i know no it's the bankers and to to have something emerge like this that could and, and, and I don't necessarily think money token is the answer that I'm talking about, but it's just a hint of things to come. And to be sure, yeah, they're going to pass regulations to try to, to track blockchains, control them, and uh, regulate them, and prevent them from doing just what I'm saying that they're going to do, which is to create viable alternative sources for funding that are outside of the purview the entanglement, if you will, of the coercive enterprise. And the more rules and regulations that they put on the visible blockchains, the 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 stupid blockchains, I'm gonna say, <laughs> the ones that, that decide to play along and be part of the entanglement, uh, the more you're going to see that uh, that that I, I'm going to call it liberty market. I'm not going to call it a black market. I'm going to call it a liberty market. You're going to see that liberty market grow, and you see more and more people go to that liberty market. And there's there's just there's so many opportunities that are about ready to emerge that will enable individuals and free associations to truly disentangle themselves from the 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 coercive enterprise. So. I just wanted to make sure that we ended this show on an up note because we spent right, almost right. the whole show talking about some really, really horrible stuff. But I did offer a solution, too, so I didn't just complain. Uh, <laughs> Larry Larry made another Denticoin reference. He says, big move by Denticoin today. You can now buy 1,248 Denticoins for $1. Really? Wow. Denticoin is on the way, Larry. It's on the way. You better be hodling. Uh, but I did op offer right. an alternative. It's uh, it's it's called networking. You know, there's cell 411 and other type of uh, peer to peer peer services out there. They enable us to connect to one another and call on one another when we have a need. And sometimes that need is when a government shows up to enforce a bad law. And I'm not talking about showing up with guns to, you know, to to fight the government. I'm talking about putting your bodies between you and the person behind the door that they're trying to get to. Forcing them to really show who and what they really are. I can I can almost guarantee you the response is going to go away. Do you have anything else to to add before we uh punch this puppy in the head I, you know i was going to stand. but i don't i don't want to i don't want to poo poo on the good feelings that we're that we're going out on so <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm sorry I'd, yeah i you know I, you know i like to end in positive right ways, right i'll know. do some plugs how's that sound i'll do some yeah, plugs. do some plugs hey you're doing uh, two new shows one new show sh and you're still doing it right one new show too right so uh, th uh friday night friday night 10 p.m eastern on the liberty radio network uh tune in for the torchwood report uh, that's myself and my co-host Matthew Taylor. Uh, we talk about stuff. Uh, we, we've generally we've we've uh, I think that we have uh, uh, decided on changing the flavor uh, of the show. We're going to be focused more on on technology and tech stuff. 
Uh, less that. on the political. I mean, we were probably still going to mention some political stuff and still going to have some of those conversations. Well, it's uh, hard but to I kind of want to tech complete politics completely when you're talking about tech. Yes. Right, right, right. But but the main focus, I I, I believe, in that show going uh, going forward is going to be tech stuff, uh, whether it's uh, you know new developments, uh, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, and then I also on uh, Sunday night. At uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, and that's a tentative time for right now. I'm kind of just feeling the waters out. Just did the first show last week, uh, so I, I'm kind of leaving it up to the audience, depending on what they want. If they, if the audience wants it to be a little bit earlier, I'll do a little earlier. If they want it to be a little later, do a little later. But for right now, uh, it's 9 p.m., and that is on the Trump Revolution page, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. And and I'm make. That's the Trump Revolution Facebook page, right? Not the group. Right, and that's the, the Sunday, the, the Sunday Night Niz. And if uh, if if you want to know where it's at, just uh, go up in the search bar on Facebook and type in hashtag Sunday Night Niz, and it should bring you right to it. And Larry said he misses dis disassociation nation. I don't. <laughs> we kind of outgrew <laughs> that, right? Yeah, we we uh, we took that as far as we could possibly take it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And so for me, my plugs are iState.tv. Everything is there. I You, you go to iState.tv, you're going to get an aggregate of news. You're going to get articles. You're going to get editorials. You're going to get a lot of shows. I do two shows a day, Monday through Thursday. I do headlines you may have missed on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. And I, I'm doing that right now. I'm kind of playing around with the times, but I'm varying it between 10.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. Eventually, I will settle on one time. And I'm just playing around to see where I get the best results with that. But it won't be later than 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it won't be earlier than 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then is daily, which we do right here on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. Do this four days a week. On Monday and every day, it's it's me and a different co-host. So, is and 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 for those of you that listen, I'm sure that you you figured out like these shows they're they're they definitely have a different vibe. Uh, each show is different, and, and it's because of the the two two hosts working the way that you know all the co-hosts are different. So, we have different topics that we generally cover. Generally, though, like <laughs> we don't do guns a lot on this show. <laughs> The last two shows have been <laughs> all about guns. <laughs> well, it's inescapable at this point. I mean, you can't really. Right now, there's it no is. getting yeah. away from it. Right, right, right now. I mean, you think about it. It's a week later, and and the hysteria is still going full, full throttle. So, right. on that note, uh, thank everybody who joined us here on the uh, on the Liberty Principle Facebook page to watch is Daily Wednesday with myself, Paul Gordon and the one true niz we'll see you next week on is daily wednesday right here same bat time bat channel and be sure you tune in tomorrow for is daily thursday when i will be joined with lou sander of the freedom fiends who is the is daily thursday co-host thank you everybody and have a have a wonderful uh, rest of your evening and remember there's there's plenty of things to be hopeful ab about and there's plenty of ways that you can take action to actually build your liberty right where you're at and and help others do the same and yes get self 411 that's one really really excellent tool to help with that and with that note good night everybody